back at it again from tiff same clothes because i have limited windows to record so you're gonna see a lot of the same clothes i'm sorry anyways my tiff basically started with the zone of interest and um what a way to start so the zone of interest for those who may not know follows a nazi commandant's family who happened to have one of their concentration camps basically in their backyard once again what a way to start. Thanks for easing me into it, Tiff. Jesus. As a lot of people have said, and I won't be the last person to say it, I really have never seen a movie like this before. Obviously, there are dozens and dozens of films centered on Nazis and the Holocaust, but never one like this. Because not once, unless my memory fails me, do we ever set foot in those concentration camps. Instead, all we hear are sounds coming from those concentration camps. All we see is smoke coming from those concentration camps. All we see is smoke for the trains going to the concentration camp. And that is terrifying. Simply put, once again, thank you, Tiff. Just throw me right into it, I guess. So there are scenes of the family tending to their garden and you hear gunshots and screams in the background. As Rudolf, the Nazi commandant, the husband of the family, as he goes out to smoke a cigarette real quick, you see in the background smoke from the chimney that is being lit. And it is with those moments that have truly stayed with me and even more so now that I'm talking to you about it here. And there's no spoilers or anything, not that this is a very hard movie to spoil anyway, but there is a problem or a conflict that arises with the husband, with his job, and it creates kind of a rift between the husband and wife. That is not a spoiler. I promise you it's not. And that conflict is obviously a really big deal for them. It's all they think about. It's what they're stressing out about for a little bit. Much like when we have problems of our own, no matter how small, if it's our problem, of course, we're going to think about it a lot. But there are scenes where they are kind of arguing about it or at least talking about it. And once again, you just hear some gunshots in the back, some screams, Nazi commanders shouting at people. You hear it all the while. And it's uh, it's it's nuts. You still see smoke in the air. And really, it's just a really smart and terrifying way that Jonathan Glazer illustrates his point. I mean, this small inconvenience that's happening to this family is all they could think about while true atrocities of mankind is happening in their backyard and it's so interesting because to the audience obviously you know a this family is evil but also you know that they don't view themselves as evil and on the other hand just stay with me here if you take a step back they have an incredibly normal life the husband goes to work the wife stays home cleans cooks tends to the kids the kids go out and play either with the backyard or with each other they'll mess with them a little bit much like siblings do etc 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 it's a very normal life right and because he's showing this you know seemingly normal life it really throws a question back at the audience where seemingly audiences should have a theoretical normal life right is how do we know if we aren't evil ourselves? How do you know that you would recognize true evil before something bad happens and it's too late? And it's a very interesting juxtaposition with politicians today, especially. I mean, how nonchalant can a meeting be with high powerful people that can destroy lives? How just a wall can separate a normal life and true atrocities of mankind and ask yourself which side of the wall are we truly on a bunch of questions it throws there's not a good answer for a lot of them but it really throws a lot at you and it really gets you thinking it's pretty crazy now having said all of that i'd like to think that i am a pretty good judge of whether a movie is accessible or not to general audiences i'd like to think i'm a pretty good judge of that there are plenty of movies that even if i may like i know for a fact general audiences will pretty much uniformly reject it. even movies i like i won't be like hey friends let's watch this on a group movie night because i know they would fall asleep and let me tell you right now this movie will absolutely put some people to sleep in fact at the press screening apparently someone did fall asleep and even left in the middle of the screen to me this is absolutely one of those movies that critics adore and audiences will just reject because i do think this movie will be deemed pretty inaccessible by general audiences it is pretty experimental both in its storytelling and its visual choices some of which even at least to me got a little gimmicky it lacks a true plot and even following the family it doesn't follow it intensely or closely to where you kind of follow this character and you kind of grow not an attachment because we know they're nazis but at least some level of interest it is a very observant and distant and cold 
way of following the family. So because of that, I do think audiences will find this movie incredibly slow. I already know some people will say nothing happens in this movie. And obviously, the only family we follow are Nazis. So audiences might look at that and be like, wow, why do I care? These are evil people. I do not care. So that can be true, what I just said. And earlier, what I said in the review, that can be true too. I am certainly not going to judge someone from watching this movie and not like it. I'm not going to take away their film Twitter card, whatever bullshit that means. Because as I said earlier, there really is no film like this at all. There is no film that I can recall or anything close to a film show documentary whatever that documents the holocaust like this and the questions it poses and the way it makes you reflect on yourself and the world and plus just the way it's shot and the way it's told is one of the achievements of the year having said that it's really hard to get in front of the camera and be kind of up for like oh yeah the zone of interest i loved it it was fantastic let's go man let's watch because it is a tough watch and i don't know if i want to see this again i kind of like the idea of seeing it again but i don't know if i would actually want to go see it again but in all honesty it hasn't left my mind since i saw it. there are images that will stick with me for a very long time it does drag a bit it is weird for sure but i found it to be a pretty crazy achievement the zone of interest four stars i encourage you all to check it out whenever it comes to theaters near you i think in uh, the u.s it's december 8th in limited release so i encourage you to check it out and at least make up your own mind about okay it. let's transition to some oscar talk everyone else thank you so much i'll see you in the next video oscar talk i'll be pretty quick I personally, even before I saw this movie, I never bought The Zone of Interest just from what people have told me, at least in terms of picture, director, all the text or whatever. And having seen it now, I absolutely still feel that way. I think this could get an international feature if the UK submits it, which I think it would. But I just don't see this happening for any other category. Honestly, director is the closest one up because there is still the chance that they will appreciate this achievement in the way it's unlike any film this year. But I still think when you put it out to a wide range of people, not just people at a film festival, I think overall people won't exactly go out of their way to vote for this movie in uh, all the categories, especially not Best Picture. That is my opinion. Prove me wrong. I'd love to be wrong. I think this is an achievement for sure. And I definitely like the movie, but I just can't see it at all. Alrighty, time to watch another freaking movie. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>